around seven years ago, I randomly found a shiny pick-a-peck. And then my game crashed and I, I lost it forever. So really, all I can do seven years later is try to bring the shiny pick-a-peck back. But if I fail, Spitfire, the, the shiny Talonflame, will be on its own for the rest of its life. So, you know, no pressure, really. The plan is to use the SOS shiny hunting method in Pokemon Ultra Sun. I also didn't want to choose Scarlet and Violet because it's way too easy. I mean, I was randomly filming some things for the end of this video, and I randomly found a shiny Gastron without even using a sandwich. That's how stupid shiny hunting is in that game. <laughs> <laughs> what? To make the hunt as efficient as possible, I first had to find a Mawile. I'll go more in depth into this later, but to put it very simply, its ability intimidate will make SOS hunting a teeny bit easier for us. Turns out though, I have a massive ego, so I decided the Mawile had to be shiny. Fun fact, shiny Mawile is really difficult to find using the SOS method. I was also making a bunch of stupid mistakes, like at the time I ran away from a battle after chaining hundreds of Mawile. Pardon, uh... I didn't mean to do that. You may be wondering, how does the SOS shiny hunting method work? And it's actually very simple. In Generation 7, there's a chance that a wild Pokemon you're battling will call for help. If the call is answered, a second Pokemon will appear for you to battle. Whether or not the wild Pokemon calls for help is determined by two values. But first, it's important to note that every Pokemon species has a hidden value called its base call rate. And that value is between 0 and 15. The first number the game calculates is whether or or not the Pokemon calls for help. A Pokemon with a base call rate of 15 will have a 15% chance each turn to call for help, but that value is multiplied by 5 if their HP is in the red, and then multiplied by 2 if you've used an Adrenaline Orb. So a Pokemon with a base call rate of 15 will have a 100% chance to call for help each turn if both of those conditions are met. The second value is whether or not the call for help will be answered. To calculate this, you multiply the Pokemon's base call rate by 4. So a Pokemon with a base call rate of 15 has a 60% chance its call for help will be answered. The value is then multiplied by 1.2 if your Pokemon's ability is Intimidate, Unnerve or Pressure, which we hinted at earlier, multiplied by 1.5 if the wild Pokemon called for help on the previous turn, multiplied by 3 if its last call for help wasn't answered, and multiplied by 2 if the Pokemon has just survived a super effective attack. If you're using a Pokemon with Intimidate, like Mawile, a Pokemon with a base call rate of 15 will have a 72% chance that its call for help will be answered, and as long as the Pokemon calls for help each and every turn, the odds are boosted to 100%. Mawile is great for this because not only does it have Intimidate, but it can also learn Full Swipe, which makes sure the wild Pokemon will always be at 1 HP. So back in the present day, we make our way to 10 Carrot Hill in Alola, where we can find Mawile. Although, as I said earlier, Shiny Mawile is really difficult to hunt for. It has a base call rate of 6, which is really bad, and it means there's only a 60% chance each turn for it to call for help. On top of that, there's only a 24% chance that call will be answered, although if that call isn't answered, its next call for help will have a 3 times bonus, giving it a 72% chance to be answered. I suppose there are worse Pokemon to hunt for, but it's definitely a far cry from the Pokemon with a base call rate of 15 having a 100% chance to call for help each turn. This was going to take a while, but I figured it would be worth it, you know, not to be too sappy or anything, but I really wanted to reunite Spitfire with its family. I quickly lost track of how many Mawile I'd encountered. You know, it was easily in the hundreds. I'd been hunting for two days and I was getting really disheartened. We'd only just made it to the beginning of the journey and I was already prepared to give up. I was wondering if finding the shiny Mawile was even worth it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, finally, dude. Oh, Jesus. Wait. Ne never mind. We found it. Beautiful. What a nice shiny as well. <laughs> no, I'm not going to name it as Scary Steve. That was a stupid idea. Slump. This is Slump. Everyone say hello to Slump. Save. Please save. I don't, wanna, I don't want my 2DS to crash this time. I suppose I never mentioned how I lost the shiny pick a peck all of those years ago. I'll be quick with this, but when Nintendo released the 3DS, they also released the 2DS, which was like the 3DS but for poor people like myself. It was so cheap that it would very quickly develop an issue where if you hit it on the back hard enough, sometimes even just gave it a small tap, it would crash, it would just turn off. I don't remember if there was ever like an official fix for it, but what I did was I'd open up the back and I stuffed a folded bit of paper in there. So it would like still crash if you dropped it, but it was a tiny bit sturdier, but you know, by that point it was a bit too late because I'd already lost the shiny pick a peck. Fast forward to today though. Our next step is to take scary, I mean, 
slump to Route 1 in Alola, where we can hunt for our shiny pick and finally reunite Spitfire with its long-lost brother. And you know what? I was feeling a bit confident. I never realised how easy this is. I can just sit here, spam A, and you know, when I hear a shiny sound, I stop. It's so easy. Turns out it was not so easy. pick a -peck has an 100% chance to call for help and a 100% chance for that call to be answered, so why was it taking so long? Surely pick a -peck 99 will be the shiny, right? Double digits? Okay, no, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still optimistic because surely pick a -peck number 100, that's where it's at. Triple digits, baby. Damn it. Pick a pack 111, triple digits. Damn it! It'll be pick a pack 121. That's actually 11 squared, you know. Oh, God. Okay, we're now at half odds. There's a 50% chance the next Pokemon will be shiny. Okay, it was worth a try, really. Pick a pack 144 is next. You know, 144 is actually 12 squared, and I was 12 years old when I first found this pick a pack. Damn it! Next up is pick a pack 182. That's actually two thirds of the way to 273, so we're about two-thirds odds. Damn it. I very quickly lost track of how many pick a peck I'd encountered, but it was easily past 1,000. This was meant to be over in like a few hours tops, but I was spending days looking for this shiny pick a peck. And I mean, it's not like I could give up now, I was right at the end. Every time I encountered a pick a peck that wasn't shiny, I, I, I just told myself, it'll be the next one, it'll be the next one, and the next one will be shiny. I can't stop now. We're hundreds, thousands of pick a peck in. When I was feeling, you know, sad and defeated, I'd sit down and I'd think about Spitfire, and that would give me enough energy to keep on moving. Oh, thank God. Dude, I've been waiting so long. Oh, God, am I happy to see that. Seven years I've been waiting for this. Oh, okay, imagine how cool that would have been, though. <laughs> how is that more difficult than the more wild hunt? This little guy, we're gonna name it Bulldog. That's the name I had planned seven years ago. All that was left was to send it to Scarlet and Violet to finally reunite Spitfire with its long lost family. Y you know, all this shiny hunting got me thinking, why not make this a tradition? We caught Spitfire in X and Y, Bulldog in Ultra Sun, so I decided next up was to catch a shiny Watchroll. <laughs> that took way too long to find, holy crap. After seven long years, Spitfire is reunited with Bulldog and has a new member of its family, Whirlwind. Yeah, they're all named after planes. I know it's really unoriginal. I was like 12 at the time. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Goodbye.